Hello everyone, uh, today, not so today, uh, as I posted, I'm going to be working a bit on libshumat, the map rendering library for GNOME. Uh, so specifically today I want to add support for textures so that we can uh, have, that covers like icons and fill patterns. Uh, so for an example, what I want to do today, here's a web uh, renderer. That this is a map library, I believe, in the, uh, this is just a style editor. And so you can see it has like this nice little wave pattern in the water. So I want to implement that today. Now, if I run libshumat right now, I've pasted this style into libshumat. And you can see the water is all black <laughs> because it doesn't recognize that fill pattern property yet. So that's what I want to fix today. Uh, yeah, typeface I'm using. So this is called Fantask Sans Mono. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's It has character. I really like it. Um, so first I'll just do a bit of an overview of how the map style works in the first place. Um, so if I go here, it's got some metadata. It's got the name that shows up in the, uh, that drop dropdown. Um, it's got like the default zoom level. And then, but the main important part is this layers key. And so the layers are all of the different things that get drawn. So we've got a background color, We've got, you know, the glaciers and residential areas. Um, scroll down, lots of land cover. And then there's waterways. So this would be like rivers and streams, canals, etc. And so that would be um, any, any waterway that's a line. And then we scroll down a bit more. There's rivers. Intermittent rivers are drawn differently. So there's a lot of different layers. Now the one that we want to fix today is this water pattern and specifically this fill pattern uh, key right here. So this is saying that you know the uh, some of these other ones have a fill color, but here it's a fill pattern. And the fill pattern is called wave. And that comes from a different JSON file. It's the sprite.json. And it contains all of the different sprites. So if we scroll all the way down, we should see wave. So it's got a height, a width, uh, and then an X and a Y. So that's a region of this um, um, image. Uh, let's see if I can open it. So there's this image that's provided by the style. And you actually, uh, you really can't see it, but it's right here. Um, it's very faint, but the it describe, that JSON describes this region of the file. And so we want to take that region and paint it onto the water. So the way I'm going to do that in the code is I'm going to create a new class called Schumat Vector Sprite Cheat that will hold all of this information. And when we're rendering a layer, we'll be able to query the image from the sprite sheet and draw it onto um, the layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the source code. Now this vector subfolder is all of the private code that is part of the vector renderer. So if you're a developer using libshumat, you won't interface with any of this stuff directly. You'll only interface with this shumat vector renderer. Uh, but this is all of the code that runs behind the scenes to make that work. So I'm going to create shumat vector sprite sheet h. So this is the header file. I'll put in the LGPL license. And then we're going to create a G object final G object. So when, uh, when I create it as a final class, so one part, one bit about G object uh, and API and ABI is it's, it is an ABI break to make an abstract or to make a derivable class final because someone might be trying to derive from it. And if you make it final, that'll break. 
but it's not an API break to take a final type and make it derivable. So it's always, it's safer to start it as final, and then if it needs to become derivable, you can do that. Um, and it just makes some of the code a bit easier because you don't have to deal with the private struct and everything. Uh, but all of the defaults look good. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to do shumat vector right sheet.c. Same thing, put in the LGPL and the final G object snippet. All right, so we've got the template for that. Next, let's see, so I need to add it to the mason.build. It's not in the public headers, it's down here. Let's see. Right, and it should actually be private.h. And builder crashed, all right. Let's try this again. Spreadsheet private, all right. So we've got, we added it to the private headers, and then we need to add it to the vector sources. Right, and now that it's part of the sources, if we go ahead and build, it should clear up all these errors. All right, so it builds, but now I need it to work. So what I'll do next, so um, usually where I start is I outline the API that I want, and then I go and implement it. So we've got sprite sheet new. We want to be able to get a particular icon as a pix buff. So we're going to do a pix buff, and to do that, we need to include PDK. If that's it. So we should be able to get an icon. Now we need a way to provide the original, um, this sprite.json and sprite.ping. So I think the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do new from resources. And it's going to take a string that is a prefix of a G resource and it'll expect, it'll be able to append the .json and .ping to that. Um, and actually, if the, I won't, probably won't implement it today, but if we're on a, um, if we're on a scaled interface, say on like a Pine phone, where um, the widget scale is 2, for instance, it'll do sprite at 2x .json and .ping. And so we want to be able to support that in the future. I believe that's actually it. All we really need to be able to do from a sprite sheet is to get an icon from it. So I'm going to copy these headers into the C file so we can implement them. So now we need to get the G resource from this prefix. Or actually the G resources. So let me look up how to do that.
should have some code that already does that, that I can copy and paste. Let's see. Yeah, G-Resources Lookup Data. All right. I'm just going to copy that here. We need to get the path to the PNG file, the path to the JSON file, and look up both of those. This gautofree and gautopointer are really useful macros that um, will automatically clear that, or automatically free this data in whatever way is necessary when the variable goes out of scope. So that's really helpful for keeping up with memory management. Reduces a whole lot of bugs and just makes our life generally easier. The downside is you can only use it with GCC and CLang. Um, some more obscene, which, you know, probably most people using libchumat will be using one of those, but more obscure C compilers won't support them. So now we should have a gbytes with the data that we're looking for. We need to create a pixbuff. So let's see how to do that. So we have gdk pixbuff. I think there's actually a way to load it directly. Yes, so we can actually load it directly from a resource. Um, and we probably want a G error here. Or a place to return a G error. Of course, we'll have to add that to the header. So here, what we'll actually do is from resource to path and error. If it picks buff equals null, then it failed, and we'll just return. Return null, and error will be filled. Next, we need to get the JSON. So currently, it's bytes. We need to get it as a string, or we need to uh, we need to parse it as JSON using JSON glib. Should be some code like that, in, not in viewport and vector renderer. So that's a string. Let's see what need to do to parse some JSON. All right, so we should be able to just do gbytes get data.
then, like we do here, we should be able to use JSON from string. It'll require some glib. So, Sanj. always have to assign a geodo pointer to null, otherwise if it never gets set and the auto cleanup function is called, then it will try to free whatever junk is on the stack already and it'll crash your program. So don't do that. So JSON node equals JSON string. If it's null, you return null. And next, so this should be a pretty simple file to parse. It's just a dictionary full of dictionaries of key to height, pixel ratio, which we're going to just ignore for now, with x and y. So we should be able to do, there should be a way to iterate the vector. Let's see. So. Need to have so it's not an array, it's a map. If I go to sources, so I can do an object iter. I'm just going to paste some of this as a starting point. Now, most likely, I'll want to move all of this code into an init method and pass the JSON in as um, a string or something, just because in the future we'll want to be able to do other things than get it from a resource. We'll want to be able to um, read it from a web address or pass in a pixbuff and a JSON string directly, that kind of thing. Uh, but for now, this will work. I just I, for today, I just want to get it to a point where it works, and we have a texture shown in a fill pattern. Um, but what we we'll want to do is JSON parsing is a bit complicated here. Let's import the utils I wrote. It has some utilities for parsing JSON a little better. This should be called uh, extra. Or sprites, I guess.
Uh, you'll notice I only have Chi Auto Pointer on the main node. That's because everything else, uh, the other functions don't return a reference, or they don't return a, or they don't transfer the object to the caller. So they're all still owned by this top JSON node, and when that's to your head, when that's unreft at the end of the function, um, everything else will go with it. If if it's not so, if the top is not an object, turn null. Otherwise, we'll have the sprites object. Now we need. Sprites. So we're going to start iterating through that object. And let's see what the code looks like for that. It's just a while loop. So now we have the sprite name and another JSON node for that sprite. Next, what I want to do is create a struct um, for, let's go ahead and put it here. For a sprite, it's going to contain with height x and y. And then in the main sprite sheet, we need hash table called sprites. And that will map the name of the sprite to this. And we also need a reference to the picks buff. Our finalize, we need to clear both of those. So we'll clear object the picks buff. And clear pointer self sprites. Okay. We need to initialize both of those. So here, instead of this, we'll do self. I haven't constructed the object yet. We should do that. So we're going to do We're going to do that. We're going to make it an auto pointer because if it fails, we want to return null. Then at the bottom, we'll return steel pointer. And that way, so steel pointer will set self to null and then return it. And so it's just a convenient way of transferring ownership. So we'll do self picks buff. Then we don't need that variable anymore. We also need, we'll put it right here, we need to initialize the hash table. We need new full. So the hash func is going to be g. It's a string. Then the key destroy func is g free. Value destroy func is also g free. Because there's nothing in the sprite that has to be freed. We just free block of memory. Okay. Next, 
do we want to do? I want to get food. So now we have an object representing this bit of the sprite.json. So we need to get the height, width, x, and y, and set that into the structure. Create a new sprite. Need to get an int mem. Uh, wait, no, no. Get an int member with default. I have the sprite object x, and the default value will just put zero. Same with y. Width. That should conclude that bit. All right, now we can implement get icon. It should be fairly simple. So we're going to use uh, not that word. Use sub pix buff. So it's going to create a sub pix buff that's just a pix buff representing an area of the sprite sheet, and it's just x, y, width, and height. So what we'll do is look up in self sprites my name. That's null. If that's null, then we return null. Otherwise, we return Sub pix buff, and that'll be self pix buff sprite x sprite y sprite width and sprite height. Make that a little prettier. All right, so that should work hopefully. Let's see if it builds. Got a few errors. So we don't have any properties yet. So, well, we do have finalized. We don't have properties. So we can go ahead and delete these functions and add them back later if they're needed. Uh, again, we don't have properties. I can always add the stuff back. But for now, we don't need it. And all right, it builds without errors or warnings. That's a good start. So what I'll do next, so now that we have the sprite sheet, we need to use it in the fill layer. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the fill layer. And so we have, this is where we read all of the properties. And we're going to read the fill pattern. Now all of these are expressions that can be evaluated when the layer is painted. Um, so it's not a string yet, it's an expression that can be evaluated in this render function. So we'll go ahead and do that. And 
then if sprite is not equal, actually let's call it pattern. Pattern is not equal to null. And we want to use set source picks buff. And so that will use the picks buff and use it as the source for when we do our fill. Want eventually, so soon scope will have the sprites property. And oh, we should be able to uh, let's see. So we need first we need to import this sprite sheet, and we'll be able to do get icon. So we do need to do auto pointer here because sprite sheet get icon uh, returns a new object, so it needs to be freed. If these should always both be zero. Now we need to add in the render scope. So the render scope is just an object or a struct that's passed around during rendering so that we have access to all the resources we need there. So we'll have, we need to do the include. Then in our vector renderer for now, I'm just going to hard code it to make things easy as I test it. But in the future, there will, it should read it from the map style. So, where does that go? Let's go ahead and Save it up here. And clear it and finalize, of course. And in init. We're just going to uh, set it to a hard coded value. So we'll do from resources. It's going to be. This slash sprite. And if that fails, we'll return null. Oh, false. 
All right. So now we have that. We need to set it on the scope whenever we render. So in our render function, we've got our scope. Set that. And all right, let's see if it works. Probably not. Yeah, that, that won't work right now. Well, it, uh, it doesn't show the black anymore, but it doesn't show the pattern. So let's see what's up with that. Probably has something to do with all of these warnings in my console. And also, I believe we need to set this to auto pointer, auto free. Uh, because this will allocate a string. So it looks like our pix buff is not valid. Go ahead and actually do it like this. That way, if the sprite doesn't work, it can fall back to a color, which isn't really part of the spec, um, but, you know, better error handling. It'll at least do something. So if we try it now, actually, that might be worse error handling. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so that's actually worse because then it'll draw solid black instead of just not drawing anything. Let's just keep it like this. Now we need to figure out why it's not finding it in the first place. So I'm going to go ahead and print. <clears throat> print that. Then we'll do, when we're loading the Sprite sheet, we'll do the same thing. We'll print all of the. Oh, never mind. That would be why. It would help. We actually added the sprites to the hash table. Always something silly and simple like that. All right, let's try now. I don't know what those errors are about, and I'm going to ignore them for now. Still doesn't work, so let's figure out why. I don't think those are relevant. So we've got that. Got our sprite sheet. Let's go ahead and print. Sprite name and make sure that everything is loaded properly. So it does look like we got the sprite loaded, the wave sprite there. Let's see if it's getting the right. Yep, it should be looking for wave. So let's see why it's failing.
So it is getting that far. Let's see if it gets there. This is, of course, the uh, print method of debugging instead of using a real debugger, but oh well. Still does not appear to be working, even though it is setting the source. Let's see if the docs for set source fix buff say anything. Arrow extend none. Okay, I think that has to do with it. Because it should be repeating. Here we go. So this is the Cairo extend, so we want it to be repeat. Um, so I would guess after we set that, we want to do Cairo, Cairo pattern set extend. Let's see how we get. How do we get the, or how do we set the extend mode to the current pattern? We can, okay, so we can do get source and then set. That'll return a pattern. And then we can set the extent mode. So we can do Cairo set extent. Cairo pattern set extent. Cairo get source. Cairo extend repeat always be repeat. All right, let's see if that works. It appears not to have worked. In fact, it crashed for some reason. All 
Alright, froze. So let's run it in the debugger and see what it's stuck on. I wonder if it's just a bug somewhere. That's interesting. Yeah, wondering if that's a bug. Delete these since we know that part is working. That is interesting. Well, I, it's been 50 minutes so far, and I think this one's going to be a little bit difficult to uh, figure out. I might have to do some digging, so I think I'm going to go ahead and sign off for now. Uh, but thank you to everyone for watching. And remember, if you'd like to support the work I do on LibShumot and other GNOME projects, I have a GitHub sponsors and Patreon, link in the description. But yeah, I will be working on working on this a little bit more. Hopefully, have some progress to show in the coming days or in weeks. And yeah, thank you all for watching. Have a nice day.